In this video, we're going to go through a few questions based on linear relationships in preparation for the year 10 um, test on linear relationships. Uh, throughout this video, just I've got up these formulas on at the moment. I'm going to use these formulas throughout the thing, so rather than me having to write them down every single time, you can just refer back to these. So we have the distance formula, the midpoint formula, the gradient formula, and then also gradient intercept form for when we find the equation of a line. Like I've said in class, these are actually 5.3 formulas, so if you're doing 5.2, you don't really need to know them, although they do make things a bit quicker, and I'm just going to be showing them through these ways rather than um, doing the 5.2 ways. But if you do have any questions about the 5.2 ways, make sure you ask. Anyway, let's get into it. So we have this first. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to go through the short answer questions uh, for the practice tests I've given in class. So I might even just make this full screen so you can see the whole thing now. Um, feel free to just go a bit ahead um, when doing these. So looking at this first one is find the length of the line segment between the points blah and blah. Well, there's two ways of doing this. Yes, we could plot the two points in a Cartesian plane and do Pythagoras theorem and that will work. Or we could just use a distance formula which is just as good. So here I'll do D equals. And remember as I do these questions, I like to put a star above one of the points. Putting that star there tells me exactly which one I'm going to call x2 and y2. So now I'm going to do the square root of, so it's 3 minus negative 2, which becomes positive 2 squared, uh, plus, and then we do 6 um, minus 4, we'll square that as well. And when we sort this out a little bit, well, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. And uh, 6 minus 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So we're just left with the square root of 29, which equals about 5 point something or other. Alright, so it doesn't say that it needs to um, be in one decimal place or two decimal place, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so if you just left it as square root of 29, that would have been fine as well. And here we want to find the midpoint, um, and midpoint. Again, we're just going to use the formula. So here we would have m equals uh, well f, x2 plus x1. So that would be 3 plus negative 2, so it's minus 2. And then it's always over 2. And then 6 plus 4 over 2. And when we put these in there or whatever, we have 1 over 2, because 3 minus 2 is 1, so 1 over 2. And 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we have um, half comma five or like zero point five comma five or whatever. And these next questions, what we want to do is we want to find the gradient and the y intercept and the x intercept and then sketch them for these two things. So to start us off, um, we see that this first one is actually in that gradient intercept form. Like if we compare it to y equals mx plus b again, so the whatever's sitting in front of um, x is going to be your gradient. So here we'll say that m equals a half, we can look at that straight away. Um, next is we want to find the wine set, where again the wine set is just a thing sitting by itself. So here the y set is negative one. So that means when we plot uh, the points on, we can just go on the y-axis which is plot negative one, which we'll do in a bit. And then lastly we want to find the x and set. Well the way that we find the x and set is we have to make y equals zero. So what we're going to do is in that equation that we have here, we're going to replace the y with zero. So we have zero equals half x minus one. And now that we have half x minus one, we now need to solve this equation. So first of all, we'll add the one to one side. So I have one equals half x. And then what you can do from here is you just times it by two, or if you divide it by a half, that would also work. So we have x equals two. So therefore, our x intercept, just make that a bit clearer, we have x equals 2, so that means that our, it will cut the x-axis to 2. And lastly, we want to sketch the graph. Well, we've just gone and found the y-intercept, we've just gone and found the x-intercept, so we basically can sketch the graph just based on that. So on the y-axis, I just need to go down to negative 1. On the x-axis, I need to go to 2. So I have this point here, and I have this point here. So I'll just draw a line going through them. And there you go, we've just gone and drawn a line. So that's one of the three ways you can sketch a line. You can sketch a line by doing a table of values, which is probably the easiest, but it's also the longest. Um, you can do it by point gradient. 
um, oh, sorry, not point grain, the grain in an insect. Um, so with the grain in an insect way, what you do is you find the white insect, and then using the gradient rise of run, you can go up or down however many places and across. It gives you the second point, and then um, you just draw a line between the two. Or thirdly, what you can do is find the two insects and just sketch a line going between them, which is what we just did. I personally think that's the quickest and best way. Um, if you start getting good with solving equations, it gets pretty simple. Um, anyway, so let's have a go at um, this second question, question B. Now, what I've said in class is, um, you know, I've just told you that the gradient is 5 over 2, because this is something that we actually haven't done. It's kind of like 5.3 stuff, or at the very least, very hard 5.2 stuff. But the way we can do it is we need to get y by itself, because if we need it in gradient intercept form, we need y by itself. And in this equation right now, y isn't by itself. So we can't just say that the gradient is 5. We need to move things around. So what we can do is we have 5, I'll try it again. So we have 5x minus 2y equals 10. But what we can do from there is we can first of all subtract the 5x at once, because I want y by itself. So let's move that 5x to the other side. So now we have minus 2y equals minus 5x uh, plus 10. So I literally just minus 5x on both sides. Now I've done that, I need, now I need to divide both sides by negative 2. So I have y equals 5 over 2. Um, the reason why they're now both positive is because I had negative 5 divided by negative 2. It's now just um, the two negatives cancel out. So we have x and then plus 10. Uh, so not plus 10. Uh, we also need to do 10 divided by negative 5, which is uh, negative 2, which is negative 5. So now we have this. We have, it's now in that gradient inset form. It's now in that y equals mx plus b. So from here, we can just say that the gradient is 5 over 2 um, and go from there. Now, what I'm going to do is, like, what we could do is we could also just say that the y intercept is negative 5, which is right. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the equation -y way, because let's say we didn't rearrange it to be just that. So to find the y intercept, I need to make x equal 0. All right, so again, I'm just going to replace that um, x with 0. So with that equation, 5x minus 2y equals 10. Um, if I make the x equals 0, I'm now going to do 5 times 0, which is just 0. So what I would then have is negative 2y equals 10. Like the x has just gone away. Therefore, y equals negative 5. All right, so there's that my y intercept. And as for the x intercept, same thing. I'm going to make y equals 0. If I make y equals 0, um, that means, again, negative 2 times 0 is just 0. So I have 5x equals 10. So x equals 2. So now that we have, again, we've got these two intercepts. So that means we can plot negative 5, like about there. And then let's plot x equals 2 to be about there. And then I can just draw the line going between the two. Now, this is running a bit messy because I've had to show you a few things, but hopefully you understand um, how that is. And remember to put the other heads as well. All right. Going on to the next page. Um, just uh, going in with this, we want to find the equation of a graph by determining the gradient and y intercept. Um, what I've said in class is that's just 4. Like, if I don't tell you what that, um, that y intercept is, it actually makes it a 5.3 question. So I'm not going to go into why that's the case. It's not too difficult. It's got to do with gradients and rise of a run. But I just want to focus on the main thing. So we want to find the equation. And again, to find the equation, we want y equals mx plus b. Like, whenever you're trying to find the equation of a line, it's y equals mx plus b. That means you only need to find the gradient, and you only need to find the y intercept. Well, we've already got the y intercept. We've got b equals 4. That, that's just from... You know, just looking at the graph and me telling you what it was for. So now that we've got that, we just need to find the gradient. And the gradient, um, to do that, we just need to look at two points, see how far up we've down, uh, gone and how far across we've gone. Find the rise and find the run. So what we've got here is we have this point here and this point here. So let's see how far up we've gone first. Now it's kind of hard because like, there's no grid or anything. You kind of need to look at it. But if you look at it carefully... Um, you see that we're starting at negative 2, because that's the y value. We're starting negative 2 here, and we're going up to 1. So how far up have we gone? Starting from negative 2, going up to 1. 
Well, our rise is 3. We're going up 3 units. And now that we're there, how far across have we gone? Well, we started at negative 4, and we ended at negative 2, so we went 2 across. So therefore, my rise equals 3, and my run equals 2. So if we just go by the idea that gradient equals rise over run, in this case, it's going to be 3 over 2. So now we have our m, we have our gradient, and we have and we have our y intercept, which is 4. So therefore, we can chuck in this y equals mx plus b. So we have y equals 3 over 2x plus 4. Now we could have done 3 over 2, that equals 1.5, and say y equals 1.5x plus 4, which would be correct. But generally, we like to have gradient written as fractions. Going into this next question now, this is taken from the two, these next two pages, or three pages, sorry, are taken from last year's task form and the relationships as well, so to give you a good idea of um, what can be asked. So the first one, if we're just given this graph, um, it's talking about a bus traveling over a certain period, broken into different line segments. So first of all, we're going to see how far did this bus travel in total. Well, that y-axis even though it doesn't say right now, that's in kilometers and this is in hours, which makes sense. We're not traveling three kilometers in 80 hours. It's obviously going to be the other way around. Um, so how far did the bus travel in total? 80 kilometers. I just look at where it ended, it's there, which is at 80 kilometers. Uh, did the bus driver have a break? If so, for how long did the driver take a break? Well, yeah, he did um, take a break, you can see, because at some point it did go flat. It started going flat at this point here and ended being flat there. So the question is not saying, you know, um, how far away did he take his break or anything like that, or at what time did he take his break. It says how long did he take a break. So that means we have to look at how long this line segment is according to the horizontal axis. And we see that it's starting at 1 and ending at 1.5 or 1.5. So it means it's been a half hour break. Okay. So, yes, a half hour break. Because the question is asking for how long the break was. It wasn't just asking, did you have a break? Um, next, in which segment was the bus traveling the fastest? How fast was it traveling during this segment? So the way that we can tell when it was traveling its fastest is by looking where it was steepest. Right? So just looking at these, you have really, it's out of three really, it's obviously not fastest when it's flat, but it turns out the steepest it is will be from here to here, so this first line segment. And again, um, what we want to do is um, not only find when it was, but how fast it was going. So we need to find that rate. It's kind of like gradient. You might remember me saying gradient is just like the rate. It's a rate of change. So here, we went up 40 kilometers in one hour. Well, we need to write that as a speed. Well, that's 40 kilometers an hour. Pretty easy. So in the first hour, when it traveled at 40 kilometers, the question is not asking when was it asking when was it going as fastest, but how fast was it? So we want to answer both of those questions. And lastly, find the average speed of the bus between the first and the third hour. So in the first and the third, so that means we're starting at that first hour and we're going to the end of that third hour. Okay, so from there to there. Um, and what we want to do is we want to find the average speed. So what we're not going to do is kind of find the speed of each interval and then find the average of those or something like that. We're just literally going to draw like another line and just find the speed of that. So in this case, we've gone up uh, 40. So our right is 40. And here we've, our run is 2 because we started at 1 and ended at 3. So therefore, this is going to be 40 over 2. So M... M equals 40 over 2, which equals 20, so therefore we're traveling at an average speed of 20 kilometers per hour. Going to this next page, we have these two points, and we want to find the midpoint of the line segment, the distance between the two points, and the gradient between these two points. Um, again, you could use your Cartesian plane and um, do the Pythagoras theorem and all that kind of stuff, 
I'm just going to use the formulas. Um, make sure you ask if you want to know how to do it the other way. So here for uh, midpoint, uh, we add the two x values. So it'll be 6 plus 2. Remember, we put a star by one of them. So 6 plus 2 is 8 over 2. And then for the y values, we do negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2 over 2. And then when we simplify these, we get 4 comma negative 1. So there's a midpoint for that. For the distance, uh, what we want to do is find the difference between the two. Well, we're just going to use a distance formula, really. Um, so it's the square root of, again, uh, 6 minus 2, which is 4 squared, plus, and then negative 3 minus 1, which is also 4, so 4 squared, um, which equals the square root of 16 plus 16, which equals the square root of 32, which equals probably like 25.7 something. Uh, again, I'm not doing this without a calculator. I'm doing this without a calculator. Um, I don't know, it could be 25 points, anything. And then lastly, we're going to find the gradient. Well, this is rise over run, or the y2 minus y1. So here the gradient is going to be negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4, over 6 minus 2, which is 4, which equals negative 1. So here our gradient is negative 1. Three fairly simple applications of those three formulas, or go ahead and... Um, plot them in the Cartesian plane and do it in that way. That will always work as well. Uh, consider the linear relationships y equals 2x minus 4. Find the gradient of the y-intercept. Okay, so this is just talking earlier. Uh, we have y equals mx plus b. So, what's the gradient? 2. What's the y-intercept? Negative 4. S simple as. And make sure you write the negative though. Okay, it's not y, x, y equals mx minus b. It's plus b. And we want to find the x-intercept design. So this is what I was doing on that previous slide. Uh, where I need to, to find the x-intercept, I may, need to make y equal 0. So therefore, I'll have 0 equals 2x minus 4. Now I can add 4 on both sides. And divide by 2. So I have x equals 2. So therefore, my y-intercept is x. Uh, my x-intercept is at 2. So therefore, hence or otherwise, in the space below, sketch the linear relationship, blah, blah, blah. Again, there's three ways of doing this, but seeing that I just found the two intercepts, I'm going to do the intercept way. So if I just do a very quick sketch, um, I know my y-intercept is negative 4. Uh, y if I know the y-intercept is negative 4, that means on my y-axis I should probably go down to 4. And then along my x-axis, well, I know my x-intercept is 2, so I should go to 2. And now that I have, like, that's my x-axis, that's my y-axis, I should also put some numbers on there. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, my y-intercept is at negative 4. My x-intercept is at 2. Draw a line from. Um, obviously, with the rule, I make it a lot neater than what I just did there, but you get the idea. Um, going on to this question, uh, that's not a 53, that's just a 5. And Fairly sure, but let's struggle out and just make it out of five. If it's not, whatever, it doesn't matter. Here we want to find the gradient of this line. Here we have the two intercepts, so that means we're up here at five, we're in here across at two. So this is just, again, we have the two points on a graph, let's just do rise over run. So how far down did we go? Um, well, we went down five, but remember that we're always starting from that point. If we went down, our rise is negative five. And now that we're at the origin, how far across did we go? We went across 2, so my run equals 2. So therefore, the gradient equals negative 5 over 2. And again, you don't need to simplify that. You could write that as negative 2.5, but let's just leave it as fractions. It makes it easy. And then lastly, in the space below, sketch the relationships x equals 3, and then write the gradient. Um, this is something we haven't talked about in too much detail in terms of the sketching of it. Um, but if it's x equals 3... So there's my x-axis and my y-axis. The relationship is just going to look like a, li a vertical line going through 3. And then that's basically what it looks like. Um, but the other thing we want to do is we want to write its gradient. Well, this is something we have talked about. If we have a totally vertical line, we know what its gradient is. All right? Here the gradient would be undefined. But remember we're talking about 
if it goes upwards diagonally, it's positive. If it goes downwards diagonally, it's negative. If it's totally horizontal, totally flat, it's zero. And if it's totally vertical, going straight up and down, um, that means it's undefined. The gradient is undefined. Anyway, um, just one last uh, couple of more questions. This is from the last year's yearly exam, which, you know, seeing that as a uh, semester two uh, topic, it was therefore in the yearly exam. So it's just a few questions. So just going through these very quickly towards the end of this video. So we have this thing, so Michael cycled from the high from home to the beach, and then afterwards you just went home, in which, like, on the way to the beach, you also stopped at a shop. So, at what time did Michael arrive at the shop? Well, you can see that's when he stopped there. So, if we go looking down there, this is just after 12 o'clock, and um, so if that's 12 o'clock and that's 1 o'clock, that means that's 12.30. So, that means we'll be looking at about 12.15 p.m. Alright? Um, find Michael's speed between his home, at his home and the shop. Would well, that means we're look, talking about this segment because we started at home and went to there. So we've got to look at how far up we went and then how far across we went right uh, again. So here my rise equals 12 because I started at 0 and up 12. And then here, if we're talking about in hours, uh, we just said that if that's like if that's 11. And we're going to here, that's about 1.25, like one and a quarter, because it's one and a quarter hours. So from that, we're just going to do our rise over run again. So we have m equals 12 over 1.25, which we just leave it as that, but we generally don't like decimals um, by itself, so we might as well just put this into a calculator or just simplify it or whatever and I think it might be just give me a second here okay, so red divide by, I think it's gonna be 15 like uh, if you simplify that a little bit so therefore it'll be 15 kilometers per hour no that's not right can't be right um whatever that is like if you simplify that it'll give you something um generally we don't like decimals in our fractions, although if you do, if you did do that anyway, it would give you the answer. Um, I can't for life me think about what it is right now. It's probably like 9.6 or something. I don't know. Um, so we want to find Michael's average speed between his home and the beach. Um, okay, so this time, here's the beach, and here's his home. And again, we want to talk about the average speed. So we're going to like draw a new line from that. So here. We've travelled 18 kilometres, and that was in, what's that, just before 1pm, so that would be one point, over 1.75, and again, I don't have a calculator on me to simplify that, but there will be uh, whatever that kilometres per hour. Same with this one, that should be kilometres per hour. Um, so how far did Michael travel in total? Well, you'd think the easy answer here is going to be 18, but that's actually not correct. Because we're seeing here, he travelled 18 kilometres to the beach, but then you also travelled 18 kilometres home. So it's actually going to be 18 plus 18, because he did travel back, so 36 kilometres. And lastly, hence or otherwise, find Michael's average speed throughout the whole journey. Now, this is a tricky one, um, because, again, it's tempting to just say, oh, well, we travelled 18 in... Uh, three and a quarter hours, so therefore be 18 over, oh, not three and a quarter, uh, four and a quarter hours. It's tends to just do 18 over four and a quarter. But again, we just said we traveled 36 in total. So here, we 36 over two, uh, sorry, 4.25, four and a quarter. And then again, we'd simplify that to be whatever it is, kilometers per hour. So you need to think about the total distance travelled over the total time travelled, forgetting about all stops and different speeds or everything, you need to find the average speed. Uh, next we have this question. So what we want is, we already have this graph here of another line, which we'll talk about in a second, I'm sure. Um, but here we want to sketch this relationship. Now, here we have three different ways, and this time we've got bunch of different ways. What we could do, so I'll just write this relationship a bit bigger. 
So there's three different ways we can do this. We can do a table of values. Yeah, it won't be too difficult. Um, what you could do the gradient and the intercept, which is what I'm going to do in a second, or you could find the intercepts like we've done throughout this video already. So you find the two intercepts, plot them, sketch a line between them, you're good to go. This time I'm going to do the uh, gradient and intercept way. Here we know that the gradient is negative 1 over 2, and we know that the y intercept is at 2. Okay? Hopefully everyone should be able to see how that works. So that means if I plot this, point there. That's my y intercept. I already know that's there. And now for the gradient, um, we're seeing that it's negative 1 over 2. Uh, what that means in terms of rise of run, that means from any point we can go down 1, then across 2, and then we find another point. So let's just do that. So if we go down 1, and then across 2, we find ourselves there. Now that we've done that, we have two points. So let's just sketch this line going between the two. Alright, so hence or otherwise, find the point of intersection of blah 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 blah. Alright, so what I might do is you see that right now they don't kind of don't connect, but if we just pretend they did connect, now we can see where they would connect. Um, and that looks like if you were to consider that point of intersection there, it looks like it's just a bit past five, probably at six. And then, like, that would be 6, and then that's negative 1, so the point of intersection, let's just call it x, um, would be 6, negative 1. Just by kind of extending the lines and seeing where they cut, point of intersection, where they meet. Um, going through this, I, like, just to keep this video short, I've done distance, midpoint, and grading quite a few times throughout this video already, so I might just skip question 19a, and I'm only going to go through... Um, question B fairly quickly as well. Um, so looking at this, we have find the x-intercept of the relationship. Well, remember the x-intercept, we make y equals 0, so we have 0 equals 3x minus 6. Add 6 on both sides, we have 6 equals 3x, and therefore you divide by 3, so you have x equals 2, so therefore the x-intercept at 2. Alright, um, there you go, straight away. And here we want to find the y intercept of the relationship. Um, what we could do is make x equals 0 now, and now and just solve that equation. Or again, it's in y equals mx plus b. So that is your y intercept. So uh, the y intercept is at negative 6. And now again, the question is not asking me to sketch it, but if I wanted to sketch it, I could just plot a point on the y axis at negative 6, plot a point on the x axis at 2 draw a line between them, that's it. Or hence or otherwise, find the distance between these two insets correct to two decimal places. So basically from here, I mean, what we can do is our x intercept is 2 comma 0 and our y intercept is 0 comma negative 6. If you just think about where they sit in the line for a second, you can see that fairly quickly. So I want to find the distance between these two. So distance, I'm going to put a star above that one. So distance is the square root of 0 minus 2 squared plus negative 6 minus 0 squared. Uh, this will be the square root of 4 plus 36, which is the square root of 40, which really equals 6 point something or other. Again, this says to two decimal places, so you don't want to lose marks because you're not rounding it to the proper thing. I just don't have a calculator on me. Anyway. Um, I'm going through quite a bit um, throughout this question, uh, throughout this video, uh, so I'm not going to do this very last question either, but I will, tell you, I will tell you how you would do it. So basically, we have these three points, 0, 1, uh, 6, 1, which would be about there, and then 3, 5, which would be about there. What we want to do is we want to show on a Cartesian show that this triangle that if we would make if we created it is an isosceles triangle. Alright, so if we were to sketch that triangle, we need to prove that it's an isosceles triangle. Um, so to prove that it's an isosceles triangle, there's a few things that you know about isosceles triangle. The main thing is there will be a pair of sides that are equal. So what we could do. Um, 
is if I show that this length here, and the way that I can find that length is using the distance formula using uh, x and z, because, I mean, that's x, that's z, that's y. So if I find the distance of x, z, and then I find the distance of z, y, what you'll find is the distance of both of those. You'll find that that distance is 5, and you'll find that that distance is also 5. Now, I've just gone and proven, showing that two sides of this triangle are equal. Therefore, by the de definition of an isosceles triangle, it must be isosceles. So we could do that as well. Uh, well, that's how you would do the question. Um, I'm not going to do it now just to save on time, but it's a quick rundown of how to do it. Have a crack at it yourself and um, see how you go. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful. These are the reasons why I've chosen these questions is because it kind of covers everything that I could ask in a test. So definitely, like, watch this video again and again. Like, pause the video as you're um, doing it. But um, this is definitely going to be useful for your test. Uh, good luck with studies, and hopefully you do well in the test on Monday. I'll see you.